Okay, so doing malloc and free, where are those going to go? If I look at the man page, say for malloc, or malloc, malloc, malloc was the enemy in like KOTOR 1 or 2, but anyway, <laughs> we're using JE malloc and uh, on freebsd here, it is within standard live.h, so I'm going to put it within that file in my OS here. I think free is the same way. I think it's a three for library calls. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I do want to make a, a clear and allocate and a reallocate, which I think will work off of my memory allocate that I'm going to do. A clear and allocate will call. Well, that's basically a malloc call and then just initializing it to zero, but a little bit different because you can specify a number with it. Uh, but anyway, we'll put these into our standard lib which just has A2I and still needs to handle hex numbers because I'm a lazy son of a gun. Also, to fix something later, in case I want to move around included header files, I'm going to just include standard end in here, standard int inside of here, since we're using UNT32s and stuff. So we'll allocate uninitialized memory. So we want to initialize it to a value. That'll be in C alloc or clear and allocate, however you're supposed to pronounce that. Uninitialized memory. This will use a system call, so I'll say uses, and this will return a void pointer because you can, you know, map the memory however you want in your own running program. Uh, but yeah, void pointer malloc constant size, you want 32t size, however many bytes we want to allocate. We'll allocate those. I'll have a void pointer called pointer because I'm not creative. I'll initialize it to void as well. Void pointer, initialize the void. And to call the system call, I have it set up under decimal 128 or hex decimal 80, which I need the dollar for literals because 18c syntax. I'm calling this within inline assembly again. Um, nothing output as input inside of EAX. I'm putting the syscall number. In this case, it's going to be three. Don't hard code syscall numbers. That, that way all is forgiven. So in EAX, I'll put the syscall number three into EBX or RBX, what have you. In this case, EVX, I'll put in the size. So our, our first parameter is going to be the size that we want to allocate. I'm going to get that from EBX within the syscall. So I need to put it there to begin with. That's just how I'm doing my interfaces here. Okay, after that is done, we want to return a pointer to wherever that size of memory is. I'm going to do more. I, I could combine these into one assembly call, which might work better. Um, I'm going to move EAX, whatever we returned, into zero. And this could be... I don't know if I want these to be capital or lowercase. I keep doing it different ways. It, it doesn't really matter, though. But I'll return this to the first parm. Um, this one will be outputs. I'll put it inside of whatever register you want to use, but it'll be overwritten uh, to the pointer. So I'm going to return a pointer to a memory area. And that pointer is going to be the return value from our system calls from int 80. That'll be an EAX, and I'm just moving that value into our void pointer variable here so we can return it. You know. Okay. And for free, we'll free allocated memory uh, add a pointer. This also will use a syscall. Be void free, the constant void pointer. This will just be a one line wrapper pretty much. Except instead of number three, we'll use number four, whatever we call it. And B will be the pointer. I think that's all I did for that. So just very thin, you know, <laughs> wrappers to system calls that we're going to set up in our standard live.h here. So to set those up, and the system calls header. I'm gonna do that. I will have a file for malloc later, but I have it included here, so I'm gonna do this. I'll put it within memory. We'll have a malloc implementation we use for these system calls that I'm gonna put in. And we'll have five maximum system calls. Oh, I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to do control A, there we go. Also, I'm not returning anything currently if we have an invalid system call. So what I'm going to do here is just move into EAX, like negative one, all ifs, just to signify, um, you know, an error code. 
because I noticed I wasn't doing that before. So I'm just moving that there if it was invalid. But if it was valid, you know, it'll have the valid whatever return value. Okay, but I'm going to have five system calls because I'm going to add in uh, malloc and free. Malloc will be three. Free will be four. These will be zero based. Zero, one, two, three, four. So I'll go ahead and write those. So allocate uninitialize memory. And as inputs, or inputs, how much do input? BX will be size and bytes to allocate. Void syscall malloc. Void. I'm going to have bytes. Because I need something to hold. I, I can't directly, well, I guess I could try to make these directly take um, stuff, but it would be on the stack. So I'm just passing through registers for these right now. Later on, yeah, if we have more than like six to eight parameters for some system calls, we'll have to use the stack or something, you know, similar to how Linux or other operating systems do it. Right now, all my parameters are in registers, so I'm not worrying about that yet. Um, but to get the parameters passed in registers, we need to put them somewhere to use in our C code. So I'm going to use this bytes to be the size that was passed. Um, so I'm going to move EBX into zero. No, yeah, this is input. This is output. Nothing is input. The reason I'm doing it this way, so I'm overriding B with EBX. So I'm overriding EBX with itself, right? <laughs> and putting it into bytes. This was like the only way I could get it to work for some reason. Um, the number of bytes either wasn't returned or it was actually EBX was having like garbage values from these system calls. And the only way I could get it to work that I found was to like overwrite with EBX to whatever I want to return. Otherwise, this value was either zero or it was just garbage. I'll make it zero, but it, it was garbage. I don't know why EBX was being set to something other than it was set before this was called, but whatever. That's just how my compiler works, I guess. <laughs> but this ensures that it actually keeps the right value and returns the right value into these variables. Um, so, okay. So the first time we call malloc, I want to sort of initialize stuff. And then each subsequent time, I want to work off of what we initialized. So if it's the first malloc um, from whatever program called this, I'll do from the calling program. Um, I'm going to have some global variables. They'll be in another, they'll be in my malloc.h file. So I guess I can add these over there while I'm doing this to make slightly more sense, but not really more sense. Uh, malloc and free, free function implementations. Okay. We'll include the standard ints, and I'll have some, you know, to do rest of this file. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have some stuff to find up here, and one of them will be the head of a list. I'm going to be using a linked list, so the head of that list is going to be the malloc list head. <laughs> so if we, don't, if we don't have the head of the list, so if we haven't initialized the linked list to go through and, and get nodes and memory and sizes of nodes to send back to say, hey, this memory was allocated for you. Uh, if we don't have that all set up, I need to do that. We'll call it like malloc init or something. And we want to initialize it to however many bytes they said. It was the first malloc, yes. Uh, set up initial memory linked list. Okay. If it was not the first setup, then we'll go on here. After we set up the list, I want to actually malloc what the user wanted. I'm going to malloc, um, I'm going to be using a linked list, but each linked list node I'm going to kind of call a block of memory just to be more confusing using blocks in several several different places, but we'll malloc a block of memory for them that they wanted. Um, and after we malloc something, I'm going to have a function. These are all going to be inside of this, this file here. So malloc init. Merge free blocks is what I'm going to call this. This 
this is a this is a terrible way of doing this <laughs> in this order that I'm doing this right now. Now like next block as far as recording and trying to explain. I'm trying to get these files done in order sort of. So merge free blocks. So when I set up and we're doing malloc and free and things are going in, in whatever random order that the program's doing them in, we we can have areas of memory that are free in between malloced areas of memory. And if those memories, if, if those areas of memory that are free are next to each other in like the linked list, I want to kind of combine those into overall larger free areas of memory. That way, when we search through the linked list for an area that's large enough for the malloc call, uh, we don't have to keep making a ton of extra nodes for no reason. You know, we can prevent some memory fragmentation in our allocator here by combining free nodes that are near each other. So that's what this function will be doing later on. Okay, but if we ended up mallocking something, so after I malloc, I want to check and free up some blocks if possible. But after that, and we did malloc something, I want to turn the pointer to that memory, uh, which I'm going to return back with an EAX. So move percent zero to EAX. Nothing is input but is output. Or sorry, nothing is output but is input. I say that every time so I remember, and obviously I'm not remembering. This is, um, inside of any general purpose register, I'm going to put that pointer that we malloced. Um, and inside of that register, I'm going to move it to EAX. So the pointer, I'm going to move to EAX. I would, I would rather just put like A here, but whatever. I can optimize better if I do this, maybe. Um, but that is our whole malloc syscall, and I know I'll fill out this file later. That is the malloc syscall. I also want to make the free syscall. Reallocated memory, add a pointer. And EBX. In this case, will be pointer to malloc uh, bytes. So syscall free. Again, void pointer. I guess I'll init it to null. Some more inline assembly, everyone's favorite. I'll move EBX. I realize that, yeah, I, I, I want to be consistent. I know I'm not being consistent. We'll move that into zero. And I'm getting tired, <laughs> if you can't tell. I'm probably going to stop after this. But into our pointer. Again, for some reason, EBX had like bumpkiss values, unless I did this. It had just trash values, trash 80 values, unless I did inline assembly like this and says, okay, I'll move it to itself and overwrite itself with writing to this variable. But then when I do that, I'm going to call free, a function I'll have called malloc free uh, vsb11. And that will actually free, it'll search through a linked list, and when we reach the address that was free, previously malloced, we'll, we'll free stuff at that address. So that's what this will be doing. But I needed, you know, to get the variable to send to that function, and I'm taking that from EBX as input to this system call. Uh, but okay, malloc free pointer, and that's it. Then it'll return, and that's all. I think that's all I need to do. I'll just double check. Uh, one other thing down here is technically this is int 80, right? This is an interrupt, even though I'm not treating it as such. And it hasn't caused any issues, but I'm going to mark it uh, for me and maybe the compiler. I'll put this after the naked attribute, actually. For me and the compiler, um, I'm going to mark this as an interrupt. And you can do that, you know, by putting multiple attributes. Because technically this will have stuff on the stack. Int frame 32. I'm not going to do anything with it, and it won't have an error code, but it will have stuff on the stack, so... Because it is being called as an interrupt. I'm just doing that just in case. Okay. We have five syscalls, and I'm setting the value. Okay, so that's good. So I got all of that taken care of. This is still not going to work. You know, because I have random stuff. Invalid, percent escape, 29. That was in standard live, wasn't it? 
Just checking stuff here. Yep, this needs percent. Type specifier missing. Yep, and then those aren't done. And that's not allocated. Okay. So now the only errors are in that malloc file that we're not doing. So I will, you know, implement malloc or make a malloc implementation. And then after that, I will free up any memory that may have been uh, allocated within the kernel after a program is called. And then I'll chain, I will change the editor to use malloc instead of hard coding addresses to load to. And then I think I'll be done, but I'm going to do that stuff later, maybe tomorrow because I'm tired. <laughs> I need to get like dinner and stuff. So you can hear it in my voice. I need to recuperate me vocal cords. So I'll do that. We'll go ahead and do malloc next. So I'll see you soon. All right. I finished my coffee today. I think I'm good to go to <laughs> try and finish this stuff out. I'll do the malloc implementation here. This will be more of a kernel malloc. So I could call it like K malloc or something. But right now it's the only one I have. So I'll just leave it at that plain name. But okay. There's some other things I'm going to need in this file here. Not too many, though. So I'm just going to set the page size again to 4K because I'm going to be using that number throughout this file. I am going to use a linked list for malloc, so linked list nodes for blocks of memory, I guess, <laughs> will be this. I'll have a struct here. I'll call it malloc block T. It'll be like a type. It doesn't need to be packed, although it could be. Um, but I think it'll be all right. So I'm going to have a size, which is going to be the size of this memory <laughs> block in bytes. So if you call like malloc 100, eventually I want to return a pointer to 100 bytes. I'll probably have a linked list node, and the size will be set to whatever size that the user wanted, like 100. I need standard bool as well. I'm going to be using bool to see if it's free or not. Is this block of memory free? So if it's free and it's the right size that we're looking for, then we can return this block. And if it's not free, well, we'll keep going until we find a free block to return to the calling program. And later on, when we merge the free blocks, we can check if consecutive blocks in memory are free. And if they are, we can merge them into one overall free block, um, you know, to prevent some fragmentation. Okay, then I'll have struct. Um, I'll probably need to name this. So struct malloc block, because I need to put a pointer here. Go to the next one. You can't do struct malloc block t right here. That won't work, unfortunately. I'm not including this anywhere. Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. I don't know. I thought I ran into an issue before where I couldn't call this like the overall name unless I also had the name here. So it, it doesn't matter. This will be right. So this will be sort of a singly linked list. Singly. <laughs> Single linked list is what I'm doing. Not, not previous and, and next, but just next. Um, to start off the linked list, I'll have a, a head for that. So it would be malloc list head, like I'm using in the syscalls file that I did before I made this file. <laughs> this will just point to the head of the list to start off, head of the list to start off, start of linked list. Um, I'm going to have a virtual address, so sort of the address in memory that the malloc linked list structure that the memory is going to start at, um, which is probably for this, I'm just going to put right after any pages that were allocated for the program in virtual memory. So if a program takes two pages, that's 8K, and I'm starting at entry point 400,000 in hex for programs. So if it takes up two pages, it would go from 400,000 to 402,000. So I'm probably going to start the virtual address for malloc right at 402,000 just to be consecutive, make things easier to think about. But that can always change later with, you know, heap and stack and everything if I set up an actual virtual address space later on uh, for processes. Right now we're keeping it pretty simple. I'll have a physical address, which is going to be where it's actually at in RAM, but the virtual address is where I'm going to deal memory from with the linked list. It'll point to virtual addresses, but physical address is where any pages of memory used for malloc are actually allocated. 
And okay, I'll have a total number of pages as well. And this will be how many pages have we allocated on top of uh, the normal allocation for a program, but only used for malloc. So if we need like, if a program calls over its lifetime malloc of like 4K, then we'll have allocated one page for malloc that we can then deal bytes from inside of these blocks that are returned to the program whenever it calls malloc. So hopefully that makes sense. So once initialize, I'll have a function here. Initialize malloc for the first, um, let's call it list uh, bytes, linked list for the first malloc call from a program. And this will be the, I think it was buffer 10. Yeah, this will be malloc init. I'm gonna initialize it here, malloc init. And it'll be initialized to a number of bytes that we start off with. The only reason I'm doing it like this instead of just going directly to here is so that I can initialize a, a predetermined number of pages to start off in case we don't need more pages later. I'm gonna have like a set, at least one page or 4K of, of memory space aside for malloc, at least the first time they call it. Although if they need additional pages, then we can get that here as well. But if they call malloc with like 200 bytes, I'm still gonna allocate probably one page to start off, just for a big chunk of memory that I can uh, cut up into pieces for these linked list nodes to return. But okay, we'll get the number of pages we need. So that will be a page size. Well, bytes probably divided by page size. Bytes divided by page size. Which, if it's anything under 4K, it's going to be zero from integer division. So that's why we can, again, check modulo. Bytes modulo page size greater than zero, then we'll have a partial page and we'll just allocate a full page for that. Total malloc bytes is not, not a variable. There we go. Partial page. Okay, so the physical address, what I should do is probably allocate multiple individual pages, but when I did this, I just allocated a block at once because I didn't need that much, so this might have to change in the future. Because <laughs> I'm not guaranteeing that the physical RAM is all going to be contiguous. I, I don't have that guarantee, unfortunately, but I'm assuming it is in this case. Available memory is not contiguous. Available physical memory. Right now we don't have too much, too many things going on in the OS, so it's okay. But right now I'm just going to allocate a larger chunk for how many pages we need all at once. So we'll return the physical address as a plain UN32. So I'll cast that um, from allocate blocks, which is in the physical memory manager, so I should include that probably. I want to allocate the total number of pages just all at once, but again, yeah, in the future I probably want to change this to be more individual pages because the physical addresses could not be all contiguous. Uh, but that's okay. So the head of the list is going to be a pointer for a linked list node pointing to wherever this address is um, in virtual memory, which we don't have right now. We set it to zero. This is going to be set from the kernel, um, and it's going to be right after where the program's loaded. So I could go ahead and set that up now to make sense, but I want to finish this um, function first. But this address is going to be in virtual memory where our malloc linked list is starting at. Okay. We'll go ahead and map in the pages for this malloc list to start off with. So vert will equal malloc virtual address for a starting point. Um, however many pages we need, which will be total malloc pages. And increment i and increment vert by the page size. Uh, probably be a block here. So for each page, we're going to map 
a, phys a virtual address to a physical address or vice versa. So I want to take the physical address that we got um, plus I times the page size. So that'll start at zero and then go to, you know, 1000 and hex, 2000 and hex, so on. So I'm going to allocate continuous. I'm going to allocate contiguous physical addresses as well as contiguous virtual addresses. Since I allocated all of these at once, I can do this because they're going to be guaranteed to be contiguous from this, you know, one block call to allocate blocks. And then the virtual addresses can be whatever, and it's just easier to deal with them being one right after another. Uh, but in the future, this will change because I don't want to do this all at once in case we're allocating a huge amount to start off. Uh, but all right, physical address plus I times page size. And that will be mapped with uh, the virtual address, vert. Because the vert will increase by this. I could also... Um, I could also increment the physical address, you know, in this uh, last clause of the for loop, but I want that to be kind of a static address so I can use it later, like for in the kernel, to keep track. That's why I'm not including that. Um, increment it every time. Um, but okay, we map the page. I'm going to get the page that was mapped effectively. So I'm not doing this the best in way, the best of ways, but since we already technically mapped the memory, I'm doing this later as opposed to how I got a page before and did it before mapping. Uh, we can get the page that was just mapped by calling get page with the virtual address. And then I'm going to set it as readable and writable, because if we're doing malloc, we're probably going to be using things as buffers and we want to be able to write to those buffers. So I need to set the pages as uh, being able to be written. I'll do that. Uh, let's do read, write, access or malloc pages, I guess. That's, that's fine. And then if that actually worked and we have um, a list, then we'll have the list head. And I want to set these values, or these called properties, for these properties of the link list node. We want to set the size, the initial size, if it's free or not, and, you know, next. I want to do those things. So malloc list head. All right, I set that up as a pointer, so I need to do that. This needs to be, bam, put that star right there. Okay, get that arrow notation. So the size is going to be the total number of pages that we allocated multiplied by the page size. That's how many bytes that we just allocated here. It's going to point, each node is going to point to a, a chunk of memory. And then I'm sort of going to put as metadata at the, at the start of that chunk, this linked list node. So since I'm going to point this in memory, when I set the properties of the node, that's going to be in the start of that memory. So I have to move past the size of this linked list node to get the actual memory that I'm returning, which means that the overall size of that chunk will be reduced by the size of this linked list node since it's at the start of that, that chunk. So I got to subtract the size here. And I used a uh, kind of memory allocation tutorial to, to do this, but it, my version is sort of simplified and primitive compared to the one that I use, uh, but that's okay. So free to start off with, it's going to be free. So true. And we don't have any additional nodes at this point. So I can set next to null or zero. I don't have a null yet, uh, but okay. So that's how we're doing that. My other function that I don't have here, because it's only used internally, is going to be to split a block into two. So if I have a, a chunk of memory that's larger than what the user program is calling for, I can split that into the size that the user program wants and um, another half, another node that is um, the size that they didn't need from that chunk. So if we have a chunk of bytes that's like 500 bytes and the program asks for 200 bytes, we can split the 500 byte linked list node, that chunk, into 200 to return to the program, and then the difference of the original and that 200, which is 300 bytes, that'll be another new node in the list. So we can split a node into two. That's what this function will do. I'm just going to call it split. Uh, memory block into two by inserting a new block.
with the size of the difference of original block and requested size. My cat is playing with toys, so if you hear any weird bang noises, that's that's what that is. Although this mic shouldn't pick that up. <laughs> but I might be distracted. So we're taking in, I'm going to take in a node, so a pointer to a linked list node here. And a size that we want to split with. Assuming we have a node that's larger than the requested size, we're going to split the size. I'm making some assumptions here. So a new node that I'm going to insert, insert into the list is going to be here. Call it new node, it's fine. Um, we'll have malloc block t, we'll have a pointer, the size of a linked list node, which is going to point to the regular memory of the node we passed in, plus the size that we're requesting, plus the size of a linked list node. So this is kind of a little, it gets a little hairy, but it's more, it's mainly because we're, we're allocating the memory with the node, you know, pointing at the start of the chunk that we're, we're allocating. So in pointer arithmetic in C is fun. So the reason I'm casting to a node pointer is so that I work with byte size pointer arithmetic. So it'll be the actual address plus the, the number in bytes of the size plus size of malloc block T, which this should be 12, I think. So this will be four and then each thing is extended to the largest member. So that should be four, four, and because the addresses are 32-bit and 32-bit OS. So this should be four, four, and four, 12. So we pass in a node, we get a pointer to the size that we need past that node effectively. We need to set the properties for this new node. Um, new node, size. Okay, so the new size of this node, if we split our original one that we found that we're passing in here, is the one we passed in um, subtracted by the size that we need subtracted by the size of a linked list node here okay we're going to set that as true or well we'll set it as free <laughs> and we're going to set that inserted in the middle of the list so the original nodes next node is going to be this new nodes next node and then the original node that we're changing, we're splitting. Um, we're going to set that size to the size we're looking for. And it's going to be returned to the user program. So it's not going to be free memory. It's going to be used for this purpose. And it's going to point to the new node that has been inserted into the middle of the list. So if we have like, I don't know, this is a node of like 500 bytes pointing to a node and that's like 200 bytes pointing to null or something. If we request 200 bytes, we find this one first, so maybe 200. So if we request like 100 bytes and we have some node before this point, but we found this node and it's more than big enough, so we're going to split this node. We're making a new one to insert in the middle of the list after this one that our original node is going to point to at the end. This new one is going to have a size of the original one minus the size that we're requesting. So say it's 100. This, it won't line up because we're also adding the size of the block, but for demonstration, if we, if we need 100 bytes, we want to split this one into a 100-byte chunk and a 500 minus 100-byte chunk. So the 500 minus 100-byte chunk is here for the new node, so its size will be 400, and it's now free memory, and it points to the original next which was originally this 200. And our original node that we're splitting is going to have the size that was requested, so 500 minus um, 400 that we just split. It'll be set to the original 100 size. Okay, and this is the memory we're going to be returning, so it will not be free, and it will point to this new node that we just kind of created. So maybe that makes a little bit more sense. If I had a drawing tablet and like I was good at art, then I would <laughs> draw it out, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so that's if we split a block, which is kind of, you know, a little bit out of order because we need to sort of allocate and find a block before we split it, but that, that's fine. So I'll do that next. I'll put find, find, and allocate next block of memory. 
I'm using block, chunk, and node like interchangeably. That's not great as well, but that's fine. I'm going to return an address, just a void pointer, because the user can use, you know, whatever memory data type they want for a chunk returned by malloc. So we're returning a void pointer ultimately from these things. Yeah, so this would be a constant size that we're looking for originally. And I'll have a couple of pointers to our linked list. We'll have, you know, current and previous. I'll just set those up here. Um, if there's nothing to malloc, we'll return. Or, well, if they asked for nothing, we'll return. I don't know why they would, but maybe it'll come up. So if size is zero, we'll return zero. Just a, a null pointer, effectively. If no bytes in list malloc init it first. So if for some reason we reach this point and we haven't initialized the list, I want to initialize it. I don't know if this would come up in practice from how I have stuff laid out. But I guess if we have the head of the list but no bytes actually allocated, we need to try to reinitialize to actually have bytes to allocate to begin with. But that's kind of what this is for. Um, this check is going to be for. So if there's no size and we don't have any bytes, we need to initialize with the initial number of bytes. I'm just, I'm not sure when this would come up in practice, but this was in kind of walkthroughs that I followed, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, otherwise, if we have you know, stuff in the list to allocate, we need to find and allocate the next free chunk of memory that matches the size that was requested by a calling program. First, I'm going to traverse the list and find the first available block to try and allocate. So current will set to malloc list head. And we don't have previous right now, that's okay. But we're saying while, while the size of the current node we're looking at is less than the size that we need, or the size of or the node that we're looking at is not free, so we can't use it anyway. Um, this goes on the other side. So if the if the node that we're looking at is not big enough, or it's not free, and there is another node to look at then we want to keep looking until so we find one that is free or is greater than or equal to the size that we need. Assuming we don't reach the end of the list, you know, it still has a next pointer. So while we're doing that, we'll set free previous equal to current and current will equal current next. So we'll just traverse the singly linked list nodes. But assuming we, you know, that worked all right, we'll have a, a block to look at. So I'll check those blocks now. So if the size equals the current size, if we have a node, node size is what we are looking for, then this would be true. Exactly, which is good. And I'll just set current free equal to false. Eventually we will return this node. So I'll just put down here. Uh, return current node. Okay. So this is a one-liner, so we'll do else if. Else if the size of the node we found is bigger than the size that we need, also given the overhead of our linked list node size, so malloc block t. So if our size is bigger than what we need, I'm going to split it into two to have another free chunk of memory in case that's big for the next malloc chunk that we need. Um, and the current chunk can be returned with the correct size after it's split. I guess, well, I'll do this. I'll do this. Just to match up and balance the uh, brackets here. What we were looking for, this one. Node is larger than what we need. Split it into two. Split it into two nodes. Okay. So we'll call split with the current node and the size that we're looking for. Okay, but this will return the current node for the requested size. It's just that's kind of implicit within the split function, so you don't see it. But current will be split 
so that current right now is larger than what we need, current will equal the size that we need after malloc split. And we'll have a new node that current will be pointing to um, for the next time malloc is called that may or may not be the right size needed. All right, we'll have an else. You know, the Goldilocks thing here, <laughs> if it's not correct, um, if it's not too large, it might, it's probably gonna be too small. So that's the only other edge case here. Do this node is too small. Need to allocate more pages. Allocate more pages to current node and split to return a node of not correct. We'll do requested size. So if we don't have do num pages, start this at one. If we don't have enough space that we found to allocate, we need to allocate more space, you know, physically and virtually. So I need to allocate at least one additional block, a 4K chunk of RAM. And I will, I'm going to do that and also add the size of that page of that block of RAM. So 4K size will be added to this current node. And then we'll split the node into two so that the current node will be returned to the calling program. And a new node will be the size of the 4K minus whatever size we needed for this. Yeah, so to do that, I need to allocate a number of pages equal to the size that we need to be equal or larger than the requested size to malloc and return. So while the size, um, plus the total size of what we're going to allocate is less than the size needed with the size of a list node, although according to math, right, this is going to have to be additional to the size we're doing because the list node is at the start of the chunk of memory. So this, I'll just write it like this. And I could do a for loop for this as well, but I need num pages to be available outside of the loop. Uh, but okay, so if we only need one page of memory, an additional four kilobytes, it'll be added to the current size. Then we're only gonna allocate one page. If, if they need like 8K that they're malloc-in, then we'll need more than one page and we'll keep adding until the size exceeds what we need in 4K chunks, according to this num pages variable. So then we'll allocate and map in the new pages that we need. Um, starting at the next virtual address page boundary. So next four kilobytes. So our virtual address that we're gonna start allocating these things at is going to be the next address that we left off from initially allocating things. So malloc virtual address uh, added to the total pages that we previously did to start off. So inside of malloc init, we got the total pages. So wherever this stopped at in virtual memory is where I'm going to resume allocating at in virtual memory for any additional pages here. which is that times the page size. Okay, so i equals zero. We need to go through all the pages and allocate them. And we'll just make a new page. I had a temp. Um, okay, a temporary address. We're allocating that page. So we're gonna allocate it, uh, which means I need the virtual address included in here. I don't need it, but just in case somebody needs to know where the function came from, it came from this file. So I'm going to allocate a new 4K block of RAM and return the address to that after allocating a page, which will set it as present so we don't get any page faults accessing that page. And now that we have a new page allocated, I'm going to map it to a virtual address. I'm going to map temp, which is the physical address, um, to the virtual address, which is a void pointer. I guess I don't need void. Well, I could put void pointer. Um, vert. Because we're starting vert at a given address. We'll set that as readable and writable for that page. PTE read write. We'll increment, so I could do this in a for loop, but oh well. We'll increment vert by the page size. Might change that later. 
is that is bike shedding current size will be added with the page size. So we're since we point the linked list node at the virtual addresses and we're adding on to those virtual addresses, we can effectively just add the size to the current node that we're pointing at and it'll be all right. Should be all right. I'm not sure this is true in all situations, but for my basic test that it worked. So might have to change later. I don't know. But we allocated another page, so we'll increment the total pages that were malloced so that additional ones in the future will be at the right address. Um, and we can use that in the kernel to free any memory that wasn't freed. But the virtual size or the virtual address we're starting and we're allocating is going to increment by the page size as well as the size of the node that we're technically adding this memory to. Um, but okay, after we allocated the right size and the current node is bigger than what we need, we want to split it to get the right node size that we need. So I'm going to do that here. And then we'll return that node. So return node pointing to requested bytes. And it'll be casted to void pointer. I'll just put that here. Casted to void pointer to remove pointer arithmetic. Because I had some issues with this. <laughs> With returning like a malloc block T pointer and stuff, it was not the right address. <laughs> so I need to return a void pointer, so we're working with just byte wise arithmetic here, one byte at a time. Size of malloc block T. So there we go. So we point a chunk at the current place in virtual memory that we're going to return for the requested size. And that starts after the linked list node, which is at the start of that chunk in memory. So after 12 bytes, that's the actual memory we're returning of the requested size. That's why I'm adding that to the pointer. So before, I was just either returning current or I was doing malloc block t um, before in my test, before this recording. And that didn't work because I was adding 12 times the size of this because current is a linked list node of this size, right? So pointer arithmetic decreed that hey, you're actually adding 12 times the size of current, and no, I wanted to add just 12 bytes. So that's why I'm doing void pointer in some areas here to just have one byte, you know, arithmetic <laughs> for things. So after that, I want to get the free block functions because that will handle just finding a block that's free, splitting it to the needed size, and returning a block to that size. So now I want to deal with the free part. I want to break free or merge. Uh, consecutive free list nodes to prevent some memory fragmentation. This won't prevent everything, right? But some of it. This will be free blocks. Void merge free blocks. Won't take any, anything in. Um, but again, we're going to traverse the list looking for free blocks. So we'll have current and previous. Current will start at the head of the list. So I could just do that here, right? Malloc list head, save a, save a line of code. Could do this all in for loops as well, but that's all right. So while we're pointing not at the end of the list and while there is another node to go through, while current, current, next, you want to traverse the list and check if the current node is free. So if it's free and if the next node is free, so current, next, free. We have two consecutive nodes that are free. We want to merge them into one overall free chunk of a larger size. So the current size will be added to the size of the next node to get the consecutive size of two free blocks put together. Um, current, next, size, plus the size of the list node. Because the next, the next list node has its own size of a list node, so we have to add that in as well. And type that in right, just making sure, yep, okay. So current next will then be current next next, effectively removing the node from the singly linked list. So if we had, you know, one node that's free, another node that's free, we're just putting these two together by adding their sizes. If this was 100 and this was 200, the current node will be 300, and it'll point to wherever this one is pointing to, effectively removing it from the list. That makes a little more sense visually, I think. Um, previous will equal current, and current will equal current next. 
who traverse the list. And that, I think, is all I have to do for that. Which is pretty good. That's not bad. Okay, then the last small function will just be if they called free, the function free. Which will take in a pointer to memory that we want to free the memory at. So this time I am doing a for loop because I wanted to switch things up, I guess, when I was <laughs> writing things. So we're going to traverse the loop here just with current, not with previous. I guess that's why I did this because I didn't have two variables, but starting at the head of the list, while there is another node to go through, then we'll go through that node. Just a couple different ways you can write these things. So if, um, if the memory pointed to by the node, which I need to remove the pointer arithmetic, so I'm casting to avoid pointer first, so just do byte-wise comparison. So if the memory pointed to by the node, which is where it's pointing to plus the size of the linked list node, because that is at the start of the chunk that it's pointing to. Okay, if that equals the memory that we're looking for, because that would, be, would have been returned from this function here, should be the pointer. Um, then we found if that's what they're looking for, then we found you know what they're looking for, which U2 still hasn't found what they're looking for. But if we found it here, we can return true and technically set it as free. Well, not technically. We're just we're kind of setting it as free, even though we're not freeing up the memory physically. Maybe I could add that in here if I needed to later. But we'll we'll set that node as free we'll call merge free blocks so it can check the list and say okay maybe there's two consecutive free blocks now we'll merge those together um, and then after that we'll just leave the loop this could be a return statement as well but i'm just doing break and that is all i have to do for that and technically this is one line comparison so i don't need that okay and believe it or not, that is all I'm doing for malloc. Free, merge free blocks, splitting the block, getting the next block, initializing, and some global things. So not too bad, 143 lines, that's not bad. Now that I have the malloc implementation, I'm gonna go back to the kernel. Kernel. I'll probably include malloc in here. Because this is technically kernel malloc. I'll go to where I'm calling stuff. And yeah, we're at these to-dos that I forgot I set up. That's handy. So reset variables before calling program. So I want to reset these global variables here. I'm going to do that. Shift V, not control V. There we go. That way I don't have any issues with global variables having odd values because when I was testing on my laptop, these weren't properly set from being in here. Even though these are set to zero, they weren't being set to zero on boot on the laptop. So I'm setting them explicitly here every time before we call anything um, to hopefully alleviate any issues there. Line those up, okay. And then after we call the program in return, I'm also gonna reset these, but I'm gonna do that uh, I think after I free the memory, because that would make more sense. Let me check. Yeah, I need to do that after. So I'm going to use this, you know, the virtual and physical address and the total number of pages after it was set, after calling the program. If the program used malloc, these will have, you know, actual values. So then I can use them. I set the virtual address in here, right? No. Set this equal. So I need to set the virtual address. So that is here before I call the program. That is entry point plus needed pages times the page size. Because we set that up here when we have the number of pages. Okay, so I want to start the address that we're going to malloc to in virtual memory right after the program was allocated at its entry point. So if it takes two pages to allocate the program for its own bytes, if it takes two pages, it will take up two pages worth of bytes, which will end up at 402,000 here. So we'll start mallocking at that address. That makes sense. That's where this is. This is starting the start of virtual memory where the malloc linked list will end up at is what this is being set to uh, for each program. So it should be dynamic and change according to the program size. 
Okay, but if we use malloc, we need to free up memory that was malloc that wasn't freed, just in case. So I'm going to do that here. So where i is 0, vert will be the malloc virtual address starting point. Uh, we'll go for however many pages overall were malloced from the program. And increment i, increment vert by the page size. For the next virtual address for the next page, that was malloc. So we'll get a pointer to a page. We'll get a pointer to one of the pages here that was allocated. If that page has been freed, it should not have a physical address. So if it, you know, hasn't been freed from memory yet, it'll have an address. It'll have a page frame. So I want to check if it does have a page frame. And if it's present. If it's not present, then it's not being used anyway. We don't have to worry about it. But if it is present, the present flag, the present mask is set for that bit, then we're going to free it. And we will unmap it. Yeah. I'll pass in an actual address here to vert. We'll unmap it and flush the TLB entry so we don't try to use a stale page, which would be bad. So invalidate page as it is no longer present. Okay, and that's all I have to do actually, is just free the pages if they're still kind of valid in memory and they were allocated from the malloc virtual address, which is why I have that as a overall variable here, which is cool. Okay, then after that we can reset the variables again. Uh, except this time I'll set this to zero because we don't need it at this point. And eventually I do want to use back buffer and finish this to do, but that's all right. So we, we've done that. We reset the variables, call the program, free any memory that was malloced, reset the malloc variables afterwards. We're already, we're already freeing the physical memory for the program that was allocated as well, so we should be good to go. So I want to make a test program for testing malloc and free, and then I want to change the editor to use malloc instead of a hard-coded address right now. So I'm going to do that next. All right, so let's make a little program to test our malloc free functions here. I'll put it in the source folder, and it's going to be a C program. I'm going to call it just malloc test.c. So malloc test.c, basic test for malloc, free, C functions, this calls. Don't need to put pragma once. This is a regular source file. So a few things I'll need for this. I'll probably use uint32s and things. So I'll include those. Um, I will be using malloc, but I guess if this is called from the kernel, I don't need to put that into here. I just need to call malloc, and that will be in um, the C standard live header. I want to print stuff to the screen, so just to, for debugging purposes and testing purposes. That'll be in print, print types. I believe if I want to clear the screen to start off, I'll put that in here as well. And if I want to get a key from the user, which I'm going to do before I head back to the kernel, so have a little pause to get a key press, I'll put that here, uh, which is in keyboard, keyboard, <laughs> dot h, okay. So like the other C functions, I'm going to put this with its own special linker script so I don't F anything up because I'm not good enough to do these without using linker scripts. So that's how the other ones are set up. So I'll have a test entry point. Um, and I'll call this test main or something. It doesn't matter. But we'll assume we're not going to pass any parms to it. Uh, but okay. That means I need to make a linker script. So let's do malloc test.ld, which I don't have. Put it here. So we'll have our sections, our text section. Um, should be everything with test entry as a name, 
followed by everything with that text. So this will put test entry as the first point in, in text, which will effectively be the entry point that we do this. We could also set dash E for an entry point, but since it changes for each program, you know, I'll just have it in a linker script here. And like the other ones, I'll add, like the other ones now, <laughs> I'll add data and RO data and BSS, just in case. Um, UP, this be RO data, needs to be data, and this will be BSS, base, this will be base. The reason I need to make a linker script is because in the make file, when I'm doing C files here, I'm linking with a specific linker script, so the name of the C file.ld. But I could also add, you know, if I had a generic entry point, I could add a dash E entry point here, but I'm not doing that. So, oh well. Um, I'll have the sections here. That should be all right. Okay. So to write stuff to the screen, I need, you know, variables for that. So I'm going to have X and Y. I'll write it a little bit lower than the top of the screen, just in case if we get a page fault, the page fault text will overwrite the top of the screen. So Y, I'll put it like 5 or 10 or something. 5 should be fine. And when I did this before in testing, for whatever reason, <laughs> if I add just generic like void pointer buffers, um, the, they weren't set to their actual value for some reason. It was set to different values unless I made them static. I'm not sure I need to do that with the linker script changes that I did, but from testing, these had to be static for them to have the actual correct values that were actually allocated with the malloc functions. I went through and debugged and, and checked, but... I won't show that, you know, on this video, but um, I don't know why, and maybe I don't need this right now, but it worked, so I'm keeping it to where I know it works, right? But for this test, I'll clear the screen first, which is in user graphics info, background color. Okay, we'll print a string to the screen. Now lock test. Put an, we'll put an underline under malloc test, just to delineate it on screen. Okay, but the first thing, so, you know, how you normally call malloc and see, this is fine. It returns a void pointer. We have a void pointer. That's all right. I'll just try to malloc 100 bytes first. I'll put how many bytes that we did actually malloc. So I'll put deck. And this will be, I don't know, it's called 100. So we're, we're doing 100 bytes. Malloc 100 bytes to address. That will do print hex. And this will be the buffer address, which will cast that just to a regular number here. Buff. That'll be the address that was gotten for malloc for 100 bytes. And then we'll test freeing the bytes. Need a new line first, so it's not on the same line. Freeing bytes. And then we'll call free on buff. And assuming we don't have an error at this point, the program will go on and we can malloc other stuff. But I'll just check that this initial one works first. And putting that in the source file means it should be um, called automatically from the make file and print types is not found. Okay. Print slash print underscore. Oh, dot H. It's, it's the file name has an H for header, dude. Oh, look at all these warnings. Okay. Well, I expected that and I didn't keep it on the screen. <laughs> I had a couple changes I had to make in testing. Um, undeclared identifier. So this is in print type. So print types does not include you know, the graphics header. So I need to, I probably should do that so that I can write programs like this on the fly and have it actually work, like I have it laid out. So I'll do that. The print types, let's include graphics, 2D graphics.h. And what else is messed up? Not very much. Implicit declaration of memcopy32 inside of print types. But let's include 
um, C string dot H because that has mem copy in it. And there we go. Unexpected into file and malloc LD. That is in buffer two because I need the ending section bracket. Nice. Does that fix all my issues? Oh, looks like it does. And this small, <laughs> small, I mean, I'm including with the hash include, which means the full source text is copy paste and everything. So malloc test is a uh, 11 sectors big for only printing a few things to the screen. So, you know, I don't have an efficient setup for programs and stuff in the OS. That's okay. Size efficiency is not my main concern at the moment, other than allowing our primitive file system to work and not be overrun just yet. But okay, this is kind of how you'd type a normal program to write things for the OS at the moment until I get it self-hosted and the editor is better and you can write these within the OS. If you write it externally, this is kind of how stuff is set up right now. You know, standard CLIB functions, stuff for printing, clearing, the standard OS API stuff that you can include now. And this is kind of how you would do that to write your own user programs if you wanted to at this point. Which is a whole bunch to do about nothing, right? A whole bunch of words about nothing. It messed up make errors so I have to make again so the file system is correct now I can write now I can run stuff so since that was included just in the source file and it was a C file it was picked up and you know compiled so it put it at the end here malloc test um, I can check for memory leaks and stuff 28536 now I don't remember why I think it's because I allocate a page by default for every malloc or something or when I load something to begin with, but whenever I load anything, the initial number of blocks goes down by one, but it doesn't go down more than that unless I have a memory leak. I don't know why, I just felt like I should mention that because that seemed important, but okay. We have malloc test, so let's see if it prints on the screen. Um, it does not, and that's because it goes on too fast for me to look at it, and that is why I have get keyboard. Forgot about that. <laughs> get a key before returning. We don't need to check the return value of get key. We're just going to get a key. So wait till the user presses something. Forgot that. That is important to check. Otherwise, you won't see anything. All right. Malloc test. There we go. So malloc test. We mallocked 100 bytes this address. We're freeing. It's waiting for a key. And we're going back. Okay. I might print that out though, that'll look better. So I'll print something like test successful, press any key to return. Now that'll look better. Should look better. Press any key. There we go. Okay, so I can test multiple mallocs right now. I'll do another normal one here. Just do this. Copy, paste. Let's do like a smaller amount. 24, 42. We'll do the answer to everything, right? We should do that. So we free to bytes, malloc, 42 by 420. That's a good number too. <laughs> bytes to address. I'm going to have this be the second buffer so I don't overwrite the first one and have errors for dangling pointers and use after free and things. And we'll free buffer two. And then I will try to do like multiple in a row. So let's do, so do multiple malloc free tests. And let's have buffer three equal malloc for like 250. Well, I buffer 4 B 6,000, I don't know, some big number, so we can check that. These are different values than what I did in my test, so the numbers won't match up, which makes me anxious for how this is going to go. That's all right. <laughs> I'll do 333, sure. I'll allocate all these, and I'll get the addresses, I guess. Let me do that. Do address buff three, buff four, buff five, Just separating it out. 
Um, I should put the bytes, right? Let me do that. 250 bytes to... I can't type. To address... Yeah, we'll do it like this. 250 bytes to address 3, this will be 6,000 bytes. Oh, I just copy the whole thing. <laughs> And three, three, three bytes. Okay. And then we will free these. I'm going to free them in a different order to be uh, difficult. So we'll free buffer four. And then we'll free buffer five. And then we'll free buffer six. So at the end of this, if it returns correctly, um, the number of free or available blocks from the memory map should be the same as before the program was called. And we can, you know, work out uh, math arithmetic for the addresses to see if they're correct. But let's see. See what this does. Undeclared identifier six. Oh, I want to do three, not six. <laughs> well, we'll have free four and five, and then three. If we alloc if we try to free a, a buffer after it's already been freed, we should get an error. So I can check that as well. But I don't want it to hard error right now. Um, so I'm not doing that. Uh, so two eight five three five should be the right number that we're gonna look for. Yeah. Okay. And I should, oh, this is good, look at that. <laughs> Multiple free tests. Oh, I put an R, not a slash R, that's fine. <laughs> so 40200C. So if you remember that each malloc linked list node is 12 bytes in length, or C in hex, and we're starting the virtual address right after the program is loaded, which this program took up two pages, so 402,000 is where malloc addresses start, each, link, each linked list node is 12 bytes in length, and we're putting each linked list node at the start of the chunk of memory that is returned. So the actual memory that we're affected by in these buffers is after the 12 bytes for the list node size. That's why this starts at 40200C. And then we free it, so we freed the 100 byte node. We're mallocking 42, which is less than or equal to that one anyway, so it should go to the same address because it's now free. Well, we freed it, so the next one also goes to the same address. We freed 6,000 bytes at the same address. That shouldn't be the same address. <laughs> so that's wrong. These are wrong. And 333 bytes to the same address. Yeah, that's not good. And that's because I put buff 3 for all these. So all my talking, and I didn't even notice. Isn't that great? That's great. I at least explain why those were the same, though. <laughs> uh, not buff 6, buff 5. You know what? Control A increments a number, and Control X decrements. And I keep forgetting to do that. That would make this easier. Okay, so 3 should be the same as 1 and 2, but 4 and 5 should be different addresses. That was the whole point I was trying to make and did not make. And I didn't change that R. You know what, let me do that. That's unprofessional. Which is the tagline of this channel in these videos. Unprofessional. Okay, yeah, three is the same. 6,000 goes uh, to 112. Let's see, do this here. Let's go 402112, subtract 40200C. So that's 106 in hex. So that's 262. So 262 actual bytes after the previous address. So if we add, we malloced 250 bytes, so 250 bytes after this point would give us 4020C plus 250 would give us 106, but then we have to add the 12 bytes for the malloced linked list node size, which gives us that value. So just, you know, making sure that they line up correctly. And then I didn't put another line after this, which is not great, but <laughs> then we have 333 bytes to this point. So that should hopefully be 6,012 away, but I'll check that. That's 402, no, 40388E minus 402112. Yeah, 6,000 bytes plus the 12 for the linked list node size. So these addresses look correct and we freed them. We'll press a byte to go back, and we have the same number of blocks, so we're good. We seem to have malloc and free working correctly, and that's good. 
Uh, let me put another line here just so it looks a little bit better. I could also do the math and print out the results, but you know, I want to know how to use a calculator still. Make sure I'm not decrepit and senile just yet. Okay, so that all looks good. We can still do other stuff. So the editor at this point is loading stuff to a hard-coded address of 20,000, and it works because we identity mapped the first four megabytes of which 20,000 fits within. So all this still works. But I wanna change the editor to not use a hard-coded address, but to use a dynamic virtual address for malloc, right? We can load files to a buffer that was allocated on the fly instead of hard coding an address. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so the last part of this video, hopefully, last part of this recording session, which is going to be yeah, five to six hours. That's all right. I'll edit it down, maybe do two parts for these videos. I'm going to change the editor to dynamically allocate with malloc and free memory for files that are loaded instead of hard coding to 20,000 or whatever address we were using. So I'm going to add in the standard live here because that is where malloc and free functions are. And I might change a couple global variables because it looks like I did that. So I changed the size to a 32-bit. The address is a 32-bit um, file address. Oh, I didn't have that. Okay. Well, I had a new a new variable then, I'll add it here to go with the other file prefix things, file address. Um, that will be 32-bit. And the line lengths, these I made 32-bit. Oh, didn't want to do that. And the offset. Okay, since we're working with the full address space, I, I want these to be 32-bit. And we want sizes to be large as well. I want to be able to handle the whole file size, you know? Not just a 16-bit value. So where do we have 20,000? Here. In the first function. Okay. So file pointer, instead of pointing to a hard-coded address, I'm going to point to malloc. So initially, if we don't have a file, it's going to be 512 bytes for one sector. So a new file buffer for one sector size. We'll do that. We will do that. Just in case we need to load a file to screen. This should be the size of the actual file, but uh, this is for a new file. So if we're making a new file, initially it, it'll have a, it won't have a size. So we're setting a default size of one sector to work with reading and writing sectors and disk functions. So yeah, this is only for a new file. If we're loading a file, we want to get the actual size. Offset will be zero. I'm going to have the file address variable just be an actual 32-bit value for the file pointer. I had a mem set. Yeah, right here. I had a to-do set, so I'll do that. To-do. Use calloc for this. Okay, when I make a calloc function... I can just, you know, allocate 512 bytes and set it to zero in one move, but I don't have one yet, so I have to do this. Editor load file. I do like looking at diffs because they give you the functions and stuff, which is nice. So file size, where do I have that? Oh, I added a new one. Okay. New variable, make it file size. Initialize that sucker. Okay, and then here where we're loading, okay, I'm going to check that the file exists first. I guess I wasn't doing that before. Eh, that probably would be good to check it's actually there. <laughs> so the file name here is going to be an editor file name, which is a global variable here. Uh, control O, there we go. The length will be 10. Eventually, I don't want to use the uh, the length, but yeah. The maximum length right now in the editor, you have to type out to 10, so that's why I'm hard coding 10. Let me put that as an item here. Change to variable length, um, string length. Don't use 10. Don't always use need 10 length. Okay. I have a file pointer if 
Um, if we got data back, this will not, this will be pointing to the actual record in the file table. So that's what this is doing. Um, this is actually, I think, going to happen before all this. Because we want to get the actual file size to allocate the right number of bytes is, is the whole reason that I'm, I'm writing this out. So our file size, which is that variable we added, is going to be the file size from the record, which is the 15th byte, and that's, well, the 16th byte, zero offset though, uh, times 512, which is the size of a sector in bytes. So these shouldn't be magic numbers, but they are. So we'll get the file size in bytes uh, from the sector size. And then we want to allocate that size and get a pointer to it. So file pointer is a character pointer, effectively. So we'll call malloc and get that for the file size. Allocate memory for file buffer. And we'll set the address to that as here as well. Okay, and then we'll load the file. Let's do this. Load file, we'll use these, so get rid of that. And we'll put that in here. And we're not loading it to 20,000, we're gonna load it to that file address. And if it was successful, then this while loop will break and be successful. Okay, if it was unsuccessful, then we had an error. So we'll write that to the bottom and initialize and then load back again. That's just changing to use dynamic memory now from malloc instead of hard-coded 20,000, so that's good. Okay, and another issue, which was kind of a small bug I had, sometimes it wouldn't pick up the bin file type from this global variable, although I think it works now because I added the data section to the editor linker script, so we can check that. But before, when it was a bin file, it was still going to the text file editor because this was not set for some reason. It wasn't finding it. Um, we can check. I don't know if I should check now because this is still hard-coded and not at the right address. Yeah, this will be file size because we have that actual size now. From right there. So that's good. I don't need that to do anymore. This will be a 32-bit. Yeah, we don't have to set the file pointer now because we set it up here when we actually load the file in malloc. So that's good. Okay, and then file pointer down here. If we want to reset to the start, that is the file address variable. Reset pointer to file. Else if we're loading a text file. Again, I want to set this to the file address. And when we're loading, we have the actual file size now, so we can get rid of that to do. So that's nice. If less than file size. Okay. Okay, and the other things are in the text editor. So let's see if we can load a bin file. Although it might error from page faults from other stuff we haven't changed yet. Let's see and just make sure. Because I had issues loading a bin file. I want to see if that bug is still applicable here or not. Let's load the boot sector. No, that loads. Um, no, it does, see? Yeah, we got the text editor. That's not good. So I don't know why. I mean, if I change this to BIN, it'll work. At least in my testing, it worked. So it's not picking up the global address for ext bin at this point. I don't know why. It might be that editor is too big and it's just not working in the actual thing. The sections are too far apart, but if I do this, you'll see that BIN works to load it in the bin file editor. Even though this is set to ext bin. <laughs> uh, it's whatever. I'll just get rid of that. That's hard coded, but you know, it fixes a bug. I don't know why that's a bug, but it was a bug, so. Okay, the other things we need to do are in text editor. Um, did I have 0001? I did. I do want to use the actual file size. 
Use actual file size, not hard coded. Not hard coded one for a sector. But right now we're hard coding one for the sector. <laughs> but we do have the address to replace the 20,000 in hex. I don't think we change save file. Let me go ahead and do that. So if we fail save file, I want to return a one, not a zero. So I don't think we're returning a zero here anyway. But just to make the interface better, I'm going to return a one if save file was successful. That way we can just check if save file. <laughs> or if not save file, write an error, else it did work. Uh, okay, we had this down here as well. I don't know why I did hex one and then a decimal one and changed it, but whatever, that's fine. It's zero, so if it's not, then it'll be an error, otherwise we'll go on. And we'll save errors, which I'm not doing. Oh, this is if it worked. Yeah, this is if it worked, Never mind. So that'll be if save file, we do this, else we'll handle errors, okay. I had some other stuff uh, way down when. Searching here, file length bytes, minus file offset. Okay, so here I want this to be a 32-bit value since the length is going to be 32-bit. I don't know. <laughs> if I get errors, I'll just widen the other variables. If I had a couple points where I, I widen these to 32-bit, so I'm doing that. I think that's all in the hex editor, the, or the, in the text editor. We'll, we have hex editor changes as well. Uh, wherever CB is, this? Yeah, because 20,000 is not going to be right. <laughs> that's going to be the file address. That's going to be file address. That's going to be file address. Thank you, malloc, for reducing my hard coding. Okay, then I had save hex program, some yak shaving here. Uh, because this is technically a one-liner, I don't need this. Although this might make it harder to read. I don't know. And we want to fill out the rest with zeros. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. That's really, that's very not needed. Uh, what is needed is the file address down here, though. Yeah, low file size. Don't hard code one. File address. I know I could do a global replace here. Well, I don't have another one anyway. I could have done a global replace. <laughs> For 20,000 in file address, but I wanted to see where it was being used in case other changes were needed. But uh, that's all I had in my diff, so I think we're good to go for the editor. Just changing 20,000 to file address. And no errors, that's always good. I'll we'll go here. 31052, which is interesting. Oh, yeah. If, if you do a different frame buffer size, in this case the frame buffer is a lot smaller than 1080p, so we have a lot more blocks that weren't taken up by the frame buffer. So that's why that's there. I probably should put in like the up arrow or control P or whatever to get previous stuff that was entered. That would be nice. Instead of arrow keys doing capital letters. <laughs> that would be a good, you know, user thing. But yeah, it still goes down by one the initial time. But not on subsequent times. But okay. And do the editor. Make sure we can load a file from the editor. We can. Make sure we can load a bin file from the editor. We can. Make sure we can make a new text file. Um, we'll do test line two, save it, go back. Test file one, test, test line two, okay. No memory leaks so far, nope. Make sure we can do a bin file. Test bin, save file error occurred. Okay, test bin gave me an error. I probably did not do save file correctly since I just messed it up, right? <laughs> Was it save hex file? No. Was it hex file save or something? No, okay. All right, guy, hex editor. I know it was after this. Save hex program. Why would I name it something weird like that? 
Where am I getting the... Oh, don't, don't erase those. Where am I getting the error? Oh, a save file is not equal to zero. Yeah, well, we change that to return a one if it's successful, because that reads better if save file. If not, save file. Otherwise, we're good. Okay. So it did work. I just, you know, had that check backwards. Create a bin file. Test bin one. There we go. Return. We have that there. Okay. We can do stuff. Uh, which is nice. We can make a new file. And it'll put it at the bottom there because that was free. We could rename still. And we should be good to go. We can reboot. We can call calculator. So we have effectively made the switch to virtual memory and paging. We have dynamically allocated addresses with malloc and free as well that we can use in programs, which I probably want to continue on that vein and uh, fix up the editor more to be, you know, actually allow scrolling and not crash. So if I go, to, if I go to the bottom here, yeah, it's just, you know, that's broken. Scrolling doesn't work. <laughs> so I want to fix that. But we can use malloc and stuff now, and I kind of want to get this more towards being self-hosted. So making a compiler assembler, making a tool chain, using the editor to write programs within the OS to affect and modify the OS. You know, using the bin editor change the boot sector or something be, be cool with it i don't know but i want to move towards that now but we have paging working we have virtual memory working okay hello Going to continue a little bit with this OS dev here. This should be after the virtual memory manager and paging and the malloc free. Um, this will be hopefully not as long as those videos, but a little extra to show that um, I was not running the kernel in higher half memory before, but it will be running in higher half memory for this video. So just some changes to make the kernel run at a three gig address instead of mapping it to the three gig, but not actually running there. So that's what this video will be over. I guess maybe I'll start doing these things, starting with the, the full screen look here so you can get a blurry view of the background for no reason, and it looks slightly more professional, maybe. It's, I don't know why else I would do this, but yeah, I'll, I'll get, to, uh, get to the code here. <laughs> what a good intro, right? No, I'm going to make another, um, I'm going to make another C file actually to do this. Uh, we have a second stage already, right? So instead of loading the kernel at, uh, at hex 50,000 from the second stage, um, to make things a little easier so I don't have to translate what I already did to assembly because I'm lazy and don't want to do that, I'm going to make a C file and it's going to be the third stage so I can feel like I'm doing rocket science with the, the boosters and the main fairing and, you know, they have stages, right? I can act like I'm doing rocket science. I'm not, but, you know, it makes me feel better about it. Third stage dot C. This will be sort of pre-kernel memory setup, <laughs> I guess. So it's it's gonna do what we already were doing with the the physical memory manager, the virtual man memory manager. I'm gonna copy that setup code from the kernel to this, and this will load the kernel to um, one megabyte because I wanted to move it to one megabyte. Um, run the setup code to map it to three gig, the higher half. We'll remove the lower half mapping, and then we'll jump to the kernel. So hopefully everything works the same, except now technically we'll be doing a higher half kernel for real instead of doing the setup, but not actually doing it. Um, I'll also need a, a, uh, a linker file for this, so I guess I'll try to do that. I should be in the build, in the build folder, right? And I should remember, yeah. So let's do a third stage dot ld because we need this to compile from the make file um, and this will be similar to the other ones i mean what i could do is learn vim a little bit more i guess and we'll read in i think we can read in right by doing like r i think that's what read in means let's try reading in the kernel oh there we go right into the buffer well that's nice and this one yeah we'll do fifty thousand. i'll probably call this pre-kernel entry or third stage entry or something somewhere in here i think starting the symbol with the number would not work so 
we'll, we'll see how that does there. <laughs> but yeah, that'll just be the linker script there. I need to do, I don't remember how to do this. Yeah, attribute section. That's what I was, I was trying to remember. I was like, I don't remember how to do that. And it needs the section to work. So pre-kernel entry that we can call this whatever. We'll do pre-kernel main. That's fine. Um, since we changed that linker script though, I can change the kernel linker script. Is this kernel LD? Yeah, let's do this. This will technically be a higher half kernel now. This will be at C0, one, two, three, three gig. We'll run from three gig plus addresses, the higher half of our four gig total memory space. So I, did, I do have to change it to reference that memory here. And this is just for the linker. So the linker will, you know, whatever data, whatever labels and things that would be assembled <laughs> or whatever is getting compiled down to machine code here will refer to addresses starting at a base of three gig. Because I'm explicitly saying, hey, the text section should go first and then data, then RO data, then BSS, then whatever else they put in the, in the object file and link together. But it should reference data at the three gig address instead of before it was at 50,000. So even if I loaded the kernel to wherever and then mapped it to three gig, it wouldn't work when I go to the kernel because the, the addresses, the references they're in from the kernel code would not be at three gig. So I have to link it there to make that actually work. I know I'm not doing the third stage yet because it's going to be mainly copying and pasting code. I'm not trying to go too fast here, but just this shouldn't take very long, hopefully. Shouldn't take very long. Um, the kernel address will be changed. That will be 100,000 or one megabyte. So I'll load the kernel to one megabyte and then we'll still map it to three gig. And then the kernel will be linked to three gig. So when we jump to it, it should hopefully work. But I, I still need the kernel mapped inside of the lower half of memory. And that we're already doing. If I look in where we're going to page at the bottom, yeah, the two things here. So the kernel address will be updated. So that wasn't hard coded, which is good. The virtual address is three gig and up will be mapped to physical address is one megabyte and up. Um, right now, just one page table. So one megabyte plus four meg will be up to five megabyte. And then the virtual address, you know, C and all zeros up to C uh, 400,000. So those will be, you know, mapped correctly and that'll be all right. Um, I think there was, yeah, these two comments are the same at page to three gig. This is the default, what I'm calling the default page table. I could call that something better though. Instead of default, I'll just say allocate. Let's do allocate page table for zero to four megabytes and three gig. Three gig at page two, zero to four meg page table. Okay. That might not make any more sense here, actually. This one might should be called three gig and the other one not. I should probably switch those names, whatever. <laughs> I'll do that later. I'll uh, get back to this then. Where's the kernel at? B3. Oh, that's LD. Where's the other B4? Okay. So I'm going to it'll be after the interrupt code. Wherever we're doing, yeah, physical memory manager, this setup, because we'll need that to run the virtual memory manager. It allocates physical blocks. So everything from, you know, line 20, uh, whatever line this is, 143, we'll go down to identity map and the frame buffer in use. We'll just copy all that over. Physical memory manager set up, virtual memory management set up, frame buffer set up. So the kernel will be a little bit simpler, which actually is, I think, a good thing, hopefully. Um, to be able to do that, I do need some of the variables and definitions from the kernel, but I still need that one in the kernel. It's a little bit of duplication, unfortunately, but that's all right. Copy the smap stuff over. We're using num smap entries, so I need something for that, which is down here. So this, I think this, yeah, this uses total memory and an entry. So I should just be able to yank those over because we're not going to be using them in the kernel anymore. So the new things that will go in this file, yeah, the new things that will go in this file, I'll just put at the end here. I'll get it up way up the screen, part way up the screen, so it reads better. Um, we'll set some variables that the kernel will use in a bit because 
this file is going to be a separate translation unit for, for C compilation. It'll have separate versions of things that I need to add in here that I didn't add in here actually. <laughs> this won't be a .h, it's a regular .c source file, but I will put in, I'll, I'll need to use the physical memory manager and the virtual memory manager along with some other files. I'm using standard int, for instance. Um, other ones I'll probably have to add in. I'll get compile errors, but since these are added separately in this file, it's a separate translation unit, uh, this file in the kernel .c will have different versions of these, which is not great. I mean, I should do this better than what I'm doing, but I'm lazy, so. <laughs> it has separate versions of all these variables in the code and everything. I mean, the kernel doesn't have this code, but the kernel includes these files, so it'll have different different variables with the same name because it's a separate translation unit. Um, for the kernel to be able to use the same memory addresses and the same setup that was already set up here, the physical memory manager will be okay because it's only going in one spot, the mem map area, which is I think at 30,000. And that is in the global addresses file, so I need to add that. Global global addresses.h. Okay, but to use stuff like the memory managers, um, the memory maps that were set up and things, I should probably set some global variable, well, global, <laughs> some things inside of a an address that the kernel can refer to to get those values back, which at this point will be more hard-coded addresses, unfortunately, but that is all right. I don't, oh, I do have global addresses in here, so. But for five, okay, so I'm going to add them in here. I'm going to have one be wherever our page directory is, so a current page directory address. I'm going to stick that at 1800 just for lack of a better number to use. <laughs> um, and a couple of things for the physical memory manager because we have, we're using max blocks and used blocks and stuff within the physical memory manager, you know, to account how much memory is being used. Um, but the max and use blocks variables, as well as the memory map pointer variable in the physical memory manager.h file are different, you know, in this file and the kernel because they're two separate. Again, I think I'm using the word right, translation units. So I'm just going to set those up here so the kernel can properly track physical memory and, you know, the stuff built on top of that. So physical memory manager, we'll say physical memory max blocks and used blocks. Mind as well. The current address, I'm in 32 bits, so the maximum will be four bytes. So 1800 through 1803. So I'll put this right after at 1804. And the same for this, they're both UN 32s. So this will be four bytes after at 1808. We'll do that. And then it's not too much work now that we have these set up um, to put code, new code into the third stage that we're gonna load. So what I'm gonna do is set the physical set the variables for the kernel after we initialize everything uh, for kernel to use at max blocks at that address we want to put the value of max blocks which we're using you know like when we set things up initially here and we do de we deinitialize regions those will change the maximum number of physical memory blocks that are being used in the physical memory manager use blocks will be use blocks Currently, these aren't correct, of course. Um, I need to set those values. And just for sanity check, these are UN32s. Yeah, okay. So I'm setting these two values. So they're set within the kernel later. So I need UN32s. So right now, these are just numbers, addresses. So I'll get pointers and I'll dereference that pointer. So the four bytes at this memory address will equal this value. I'll do that. It's just always a little awkward typing this out. It makes sense, but it's a little awkward to read. So the four bytes at this value will be the used blocks. But assuming, you know, the virtual memory manager setup uh, is working, because we haven't changed that, it should be working. Um, the kernel will now be at one meg, and it will be mapped to lower and higher memory uh, from these two virtual addresses here. These two um, for loops that set the virtual two physical addresses zero to four meg, which the kernel will be at since it's at one megabyte, and three gig to three gig plus four meg, which the kernel will be at because I'm starting the frame at the kernel. Okay, so it's mapped into lower and higher memory, but we do need to load the kernel to one meg to start off with, which I'm not doing yet. So I'm going to do that before 
before we initialize the virtual memory here, I'm going to do that here. So load kernel from disk so that virtual memory manager works, I guess, works. It'll, we want to load the kernel to one megabyte in memory because that's where the address is going to be. So the file name, and I already know this from before, I'm not, but I can show where I'm getting this from. I already know this from before because I know the files and functions I'm using, but I'm going to use load file. We should be able to load it with, you know, just kernel and six. It should just take in the file name as a, a constant pointer there. Um, the length, yeah, the length of the name will be six. Hopefully I can remove that later. Uh, the address to load it to will be kernel address, which will be one megabyte, 100,000 in hex. And we do need a file extension, just arbitrary thing. Since I put these up here, I'll just add it here. Just call it extension. It needs to be three bytes. I'm not going to use it, but I need to pass it to the file. And I should check if this works. But, uh... Add error handling <laughs> later. Right now, I don't want to. But we'll load it to one meg first, so that when this maps it, it's fine. We don't need to do this now, but I, I should do it. Because after we initial, actually we do need to do this now, sorry. After we initialize virtual memory, every address referred to will be a virtual address. So if we don't load it to one meg first, if we use the address one megabyte after paging is enabled, um, one megabyte will be one megabyte virtual. And since that will be identity mapped, it'll look to one megabyte physical. So I guess we could load it and it would be fine, but it, I don't know. It makes more sense to me to load it to one meg first before everything counts as a virtual address. I just think conceptually that that logic runs better, so I put it there. So that's my bad attempt to justify that decision, but it should be all right. Um, but okay, how do we actually put the kernel into higher half memory now that it's mapped in lower and higher half? I'll remove the lower half kernel mapping here before jumping to the kernel, just to ensure we are doing... Um, the correct higher half, you know, runtime. So I'm going to have a virtual address. We're going to make it equal to the kernel address. Now, an easier way to do this would be to just unmap the first four megs that were identity that were identity mapped. You know, first four megs of memory. Um, but I'm not doing that because I'm still using hard coded addresses for things like the file table, which is in the first four megs of memory. So I don't want to unmap those. I'm just going to unmap where the kernel was mapped. Um, so this code would have to change and be expanded if the kernel expands beyond three megs in the future, because I'm going to unmap kernel address at one meg up to the limit of the first identity mapped four megs. So one meg to four meg, that three megs in size, will be unmapped. So if the kernel grows beyond three megs later, this will have to change a little bit. But right now, it should be all right. I'll just have it go up to four megabytes, and we'll add for every page in there, so page size. We'll unmap the page. Yes, yeah, it'll be a one-liner, so I'll get rid of those. Um, for the address, that is the virtual address. And virtual is at B6, so V6. Um, yeah, unmap page. So we're just going to set the frame to zero and clear the present flag for each page at that address that was previously identity mapped here as part of the first four megs. Okay. Just going to unmap the kernel stuff so that if we refer to those addresses, they'll be virtual addresses and they won't be mapped. We'll get a page fault or we can use them for other purposes. Now that the kernel is also mapped in three gig space, we can use it from the three gig space. Um, since I changed the linker script for the kernel to put it at, you know, three gig address references. Um, so now that we did that, I don't want stale TLB cache lookups for the one to four meg addresses, so I'm going to flush the, the TLB. Reload CR3 register to flush TLB to update unmapped pages. Okay, so I'll just use inline assembly for that. Simply volatile, and the OS Dev Wiki had a, <laughs> I think, an example that was just moving CR3 to ECX, or somebody on a forum thread had an example, but I'm just going to move it to ECX and then directly move it back, <laughs> just reload it with the same value. 
And that does work for reloading it and flushing the whole TLB effectively. And validating every page within the translation look aside buffer. Just load it with itself. Okay, then I'm going to store the page directory for kernel to use. So the four bytes that I'm going to dereference, the four bytes at current page directory address are going to be um, the current page directory. But that is a pointer. So I'm going to make that just plain four byte value. And then the kernel can get this value and use it as the current page directory. We'll be all right. But at this point, if we want to call the kernel, I'll do that. So I'll do call slash execute higher half kernel. And since the kernel is linked at three gigs and I set the, you know, the entry section for the kernel to be at the start of the text section, which starts at three gig, I should just be able to jump or call three gig and it should be all right. Uh, so I'm going to do that. So void pointer, void pointer, void pointer void to the three gig address. One, two, three. Um, so we'll just call it as a function pointer effectively with uh, no arguments. So that should be all right. So we'll go down here, delete that. Okay. And that should be all we need to do in this file. I believe we still have other changes to make in the boot sector. Um, second stage, I don't think needs to change. Second stage, we're just going to 50,000, which is where the third stage is set up in the linker script. So this should be fine. Instead of jumping to kernel, jump to third stage, pre-kernel memory setup, or uh, pre-kernel setup, that's fine. No changes really needed there. The boot sector will have to change because it's loading the kernel and I don't want to do that. I want to change this, the kernel string. I'll call that pre-kernel string. <laughs> and the file is called third stage dot C. That's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two spaces, right, with two, yeah, okay. So the pre-kernel string will be loaded to 50,000. And that should be all right, because it'll compile and load. So that'll be dynamic. Okay, so then we'll have a few more changes in the kernel here where we, where we initialize things. Before I go about initializing interrupts, even though I set the interrupts before the, the memory management was initialized, um, it could be in either order. I mean, the interrupts are still CLI right now. They're still clear, so this is okay, because they won't be set and enabled till down here. So this should be all right. But I'll just get the variables that we set up from the third stage here before we do anything. Um, so I'll get and what I call it, get and set current page directory or kernel, the kernel page directory. So the current page directory, I know this is the same name as the variable in the third stage, and that's because the virtual memory manager is linked into the third stage.c and the kernel.c. So again, they're separate even though they refer to the same thing. They're separate instances, if you will, of the same file. So we have to set it explicitly in the kernel, even though it was set in the third stage. So I'm just gonna get this value from the memory address that it was stored at. But it is a pointer and it is a page directory pointer. So page directory pointer to the bytes, and the bytes are a four byte value pointer. <laughs> this is a bit, uh, it's a bit awkward, but that's all right. Current page directory address. So those four bytes of data stored at this address, and I'm sort of typecasting that to a page directory pointer, which says, okay, these four bytes are actually an address to the current page directory filled with the currently used page tables and pages within those tables. So yeah, we're getting some pointer in direction, but you know, that's, that's fun sometimes, right? Just a little awkward. And I'll set the physical memory manager variables. Otherwise, when we, we can't really load anything, we'll get page faults or it won't work because the blocks being set will be zero because <laughs> they aren't set. Even though we initialize this in the third stage, we don't have the variables set from initializing the physical memory manager in the kernel. So I need to set those variables here, max blocks and use blocks and the memory map because that isn't set either by default. So that'll be a pointer to UN32s. Um, to the mem map address. Oh, it's area. I should call these all one thing and be consistent, right? I think, yeah, it is area. 
Yeah, okay. I shouldn't call some things area and some things address. It's kind of confusing, but I guess it is an address, but it's also a variety of data at an address. So I guess an area would make more sense. So I don't know. It's, I'm worrying about stuff I don't need to be, I guess. So the maximum number of blocks is the four bytes taken from a four byte block of data at physical memory max blocks. Similarly for used blocks. If we couldn't map pages, which is how I figured out I needed to set these in testing, <laughs> if we couldn't map pages, the message on the screen wasn't, um, didn't have a new line in the right place. So I guess I'll do that. Was that at line 687 or something? Is it this line? Oh, it is, yeah, this line. I'm just putting a new line here. Because before it would go <laughs> multiple pages and just all be on one line and look bad. So I need to add a new line there. But that won't come up here, hopefully. I will see what I messed up. C standard int not found. Because it's standard int.h, that's why. That is why. The right file, but not the right file, as is tradition. There we go. There's the warnings I thought I would have. Memset, physical memory manager. Okay, so well, I can add string at h here, or I can add it here. And I should probably add it to both, but I'll just put that there. And load file is not there. That's true. Um, put that here. Uh, I'll do it first, maybe. I don't think it matters. But that's disk, file ops. So again, all these files and variables therein will be differently. They'll be different for the kernel in this one. Just reminding myself in case something else goes wrong. <laughs> the value set in here won't be set in the kernel because they're different. They'll have different files at compilation and link time. Graphics mode I need for some reason. Oh yeah, because I'm calling on the base pointer to get the uh, to get the frame buffer and stuff. That makes sense. Okay, I'll include that as well. Graphics, 2D. Eventually, I just want to make this graphics.h or have a separate 3D graphics. I just haven't done it yet, but I'll just do that now. That's fine. They'll both have the same frame buffer, so maybe I should add the frame buffer just to like the global addresses file. That might make more sense. Probably would make more sense. Undefined symbol CR3. So where's that at? Third stage. Okay. Down here. Oh, I need a percent there. It doesn't know this symbol because it's not saying it's a register. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't tell you what line that occurred on because it's in line assembly. And why would it do that? But okay, I did that. So I guess we'll have a drum roll. Did I type everything in right? No. Because I have to make it again because I'd make errors. I do need to take care of that, but a oh, drum roll. Uh, the kernel should be running from three gig. Hey, nothing should be different. We might have more page faults depending if I mess stuff up, but we can print a file. Um, the blocks are the same as before. Calculator works. So everything is working now. Except the kernel is running in the three gig address space. Of course, that's kind of transparent. You can't really see that, but it is. And yeah, so that's good. To rename stuff works. Okay. So yeah, the kernel is running in three gig and up address space. It is not running in the lower identity mapped address space because we unmapped those pages right here. If we did not do this, then the kernel probably would still be running in the lower half, but we jumped to the higher half. And since the kernel was linked with the higher half addresses, then we should be officially running a higher half kernel now. So I meant to put this in the last video or the one before the last, but you know, I forgot <laughs> and I had to research and I was like, wait a minute, I think I'm doing this wrong while I was editing. I was like, I'm probably doing this wrong. It's not really in the higher half because I didn't see where I was actually using these addresses. So now we should officially be using these addresses and we added a third stage. So hopefully any other setup I can just do and see in here before the kernel and we won't need a fourth stage or anything, but yeah. So that's all I got for this one. We got a higher half kernel. Now the next video thing that I do, um, 
probably leaning towards making a better file system because we do have a limitation right now of loading things, probably only up to uh, sector FF, which is coming up really quick now. So I'll probably change the file system. Um, it'll be closer to something like ext2 kind of not quite but kind of but it'll probably have a c file for um file system.h or something right might as well go with the the flow that i've been doing i'll have like an inode but it'll be more just like a file id number and it'll have metadata about the file like creation or modified date i might just do modified date and update it on creation or modification just have the one field um, file size and bytes and then blocks maybe a type if it's like a directory or regular file because i want to have directories and then a directory would be a special type of file that its file data would just be strings of the file name so i don't have to store arbitrary length strings within the metadata so the metadata will also have a pointer to the file data which for text files will be the text for binary files it'll be their you know binary their bytes on disk just a pointer to like i guess an lba number I've been doing cylinder head sector addressing, but I'll switch to LBA and do everything else in LBA. So it might be a bigger change than I'm thinking because I'll have to change things in a few spots from file loading and saving to uh, initially booting and everything. So it didn't, you know, hopefully it'll be interesting, but I'm, I'm probably going to do that. Change the file system. I guess change the editor after that because I kind of want to move towards, since it boots on the laptop, I want to move towards self hosting more. So I would like to be able to assemble or compile or handwrite machine code if I need to changes to the OS files within a better file system with directory structure and compile it in the OS and update the OS hopefully not have to reboot for some reason but yeah so I'll be moving towards that and I'm talking and rambling too much but I do appreciate people watching <laughs> even when I take you know a few month long breaks to explore other interests like making an assembler or other things even though you haven't seen that but it should come in handy in the future and just things like that uh, i'm very appreciative for people watching i am thank you and yeah i will catch you on the next one cheers this is water not vodka